Hello, hello, and welcome to talking about a book, a new release. <laughs> so of course this will be non-spoiler because it hasn't come out yet, but this is talking about The Mercy of Gods by uh, The Expanse authors James S. A. Corey, which is um, the, the, the author duo Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank, I believe is the other author. So. Anyone who's aware of me is aware of my pre-existing history with um, Daniel Abraham as an author. I have read The Long Price Quartet twice, it's one of my favourite fantasy series, and I'm also up to date on the Kithamar trilogy with the third, the final instalment in that trilogy coming out uh, at the beginning of next year. And so uh, I don't think this will be level. Is that better or worse? I don't know whether that's better or worse, but I've moved it. Um, so, uh, yes, and then I have not read The Expanse, uh, mainly because uh, Grace read the first book, Leviathan Wakes, and was kind of like, this doesn't have quite the same Daniel Abraham flair to it. So, I wasn't planning on touching The Mercy of Gods until I saw um, Alan from the Library of Alan, uh, Alan, I can never fucking say it properly, we all know who Alan is. Uh, I I, uh, I saw his review on uh, Goodreads, and then I saw uh, Johan from Library of the Viking read it, and they both gave very positive reviews. And Alan said that he also had not read The Expanse, uh, but and, and so that kind of gave me the sense that there must be something to it. Yeah, so I requested it on that galley, and, and it, in it came very luckily, very nicely. Uh, and, and I read it. Who would have thought that that would be the order of things? My main point, really, is to say that this is probably joint up there with um, Ghost Mountain by Ronan Hessian and also joint with Private Rights by Julia Armfield as my favourite release of 2024 so far that I've read. Um, and this is my favourite one by an author that I have not read before. Um, evidently I've read Daniel Abraham, but I haven't read the duo. It counts. It counts. So while that very much sets up uh, the expectation of how I felt about it, to give you an idea of the plot, uh, we're essentially following a group of... Uh, the cat is playing with the tripod. We'll see how that goes. Um, we're essentially following a group of researchers who have uh, kind of made a big discovery. They're one of the most famous research groups in the world uh, due to their discovery. They have bridged uh, two trees of life, it's described as, because we are, watch we are following a human race that has arrived on a different planet. Uh, we are uh, thousands of years in the future, not on planet Earth, and as a result, part of planet Earth has gone to this planet and, and as a result the, 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 the trees of life of both civilizations don't mesh and um, we are following the group that has made that happen. The first maybe third of the book, maybe quarter, is setting up that, that research group, kind of grounding us in the characters and the civilization that we're following, the advances we've made, etc. Uh, at which point we then have a first contact story. Uh, the first contact story with the Carricks, which were probably... It's the part where the book completely drew me in, uh, because the first contact, not to spoil anything, because I think one of the wonderful things is knowing you interact, but the whole point of a first contact story is to experience that first contact. So I won't say anything other than uh, the Carricks and their, their, their system of function, their system of living, their societal roles, their societal structure, everything about it is truly alien to how they view the world and uh, the universe and everything about it. And so the juxtaposition between humans trying to understand what is fundamentally not human, having to hit that barrier of kind of trying to attribute a human emotion or feeling, uh, a human motivation to something that truly has no founding within that, uh, is is wonderful. It reminded me a lot in that sense of Arrival, as in Story of Your Life um, by, by Ted Chiang. Uh, there's, there's the line in the 
the film. I don't remember whether it's in the book, but I just rewatched the film with Grace. And it's the essentially the idea of like this has happened throughout history uh, in terms of the the arrival of these aliens. Like this has happened throughout history. Just look at this. Just look at this. Just look at this. And you're citing human examples, and as a result, it's uh, it's an attribution that can't really have any value because it's such a limited pool that you're drawing from. You're only citing human experience, and this is something outside of human experience. Mainly, I, I really want to emphasize that it has brilliant and nuanced ideas in terms of um, how humans would respond to the very particular type of first contact story this is. Uh, and I think they really drive home very powerfully the emotional reactions to what happens. The It's hard to really not say without going into spoilers. The language in such a way that it's accessible, everything's conveyed accessibly, but what it is conveying is extremely hard hitting. The pacing of the book, once you get kind of to that first contact, is an absolute page turner. I was leafing through this. Um, in terms of, it was hard to work out because different like Goodreads had like 400 pages, Storygraph had like 500, I don't think there's a specific thing out at the moment that actually says how long the book is. But if you're going off Storygraphs, I was reading like 100 and 120 pages a day, easy, because it was so effortlessly readable. Um, and yeah, I think that my only criticism my only criticism is that we see a very limited perspective in terms of everyone being of an ability to speak English, if you get what I mean. Now, of course, we don't know what's happened. I suppose thinking about it now, the one way you could explain it is that we don't know who made it to this new planet, of course. So uh, this could be that it's only English speaking that survived um, would be an explanation. But the way I felt is that because the book deals with the trappings of how we communicate, how do we, how do all these different species and races, how do we communicate with them? How do we emotionally connect, etc.? I think having a microcosmic version of that of humans as well struggling if if you're forced into a position with someone who can't speak the same language and then having to communicate and having that as the kind of showing the different well showing the 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 the, the difficulty we're having on the grand scale on a smaller scale i i i kind of felt that in terms of like well this is only showing an english speaking predominantly english speaking society would deal with this whereas it would be interesting to see cultural differences between humans and how different people react. Um, but that's a minor nitpick because like I just said, I, I very easily just then created an explanation for why that isn't there. So it's not really anything to, to drive a wedge into. Um, in terms of other things that popped to my head, I saw Johan say that he was a bit disappointed that the humans felt so human considering we've made such like there's such a time difference in terms of where we are now to where it is uh, in that story which i do completely understand as a gripe um personally i felt that it kind of ground like grounds you in the story because if we were dealing with a different type of human structure it's different human civilization and also had to deal with interacting with different a different race of of alien. I I could feel that it may be a bit too much for what they're doing because I feel like they're trying to do a very specific thing in a very specific way. Um, and I'm here for what that is. I think it's a very interesting uh, uh, concept. And I, I'm discovering evidently that I'm a big fan of first contact stories because I mean I love Story of Your Life. I I, I really loved this. I I really enjoyed Rendezvous with Rama, um, like quite a lot of my favourite sci-fi books do have a, a, a first contact element to them. So 
If you've got any first contact stories you'd like to recommend in the description, uh, in the comment section, I'd love to hear them. Otherwise, I think that's mainly what I have to say. I really enjoyed it. Like, that's basically it. I think if you're hyped for this because you know James S.A. Corey and you've read The Expanse or you've read Daniel Abraham, it's going to deliver. Uh, I think if you're a fan of first contact stories, it's going to deliver. I think if you're a fan of fast-paced thrillers in space with some kind of horror -y aspects, um, then I think you're in for a treat. And I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised because I was a little hesitant going in and it just su surpassed everything I was expecting. So if you did enjoy this video, not the book, if you do enjoy the book as well, if you're watching it after, please do like as well. But like and subscribe, and as always, have a nice rest of your day.